Thank you for staying with us. But now to continue the discussion, let me be asking you, the issue of the borders have been mentioned more often than not. What exactly is wrong with Nigeria's borders? Right now, uh, you know, patrolling the border is difficult. Nigeria has thousands of kilometers of border, uh, border crossing. So it's not like we can have a person everywhere. But because of the integration of the various uh, nomadic communities, the Katwebrim communities, we do have people who leave Nigeria to go to Niger, some end up as far as Egypt, and then they come back. But again, that's unsustainable. We are at a point where uh, that does more harm than good. So uh, again, we have to ensure that locally, what's within Nigeria is controlled, therefore removing the motivation of people bringing cows from outside Nigeria. If you know that if you bring your cow into Nigeria and you don't go through the proper channels, which is you don't get it tagged, you don't get it checked by the vets, and so on and so forth, you're going to forfeit your cattle, that's going to dissuade a lot of them from coming in. Um, also, we, may, we need to make sure as we put together our ranches, we need to make sure that um, those affected by uh, uh, whose land is being used for the proposed grazing route or for the ranches, is uh, those people are compensated. We're isolating this issue, especially the one coming from the Fulani attacks. Um, because I think the issue is so complex that we really can isolate it. So um, even areas that has been affected now or we're isolated to other issues. For example, from observation, um, Fulani militia is well networked within the borders of Nigeria and they are well equipped. Um, there's enough ammunition and they are carrying out their attacks strategically. You get, but it's very unfortunate that the security agencies are not even coming to understand, or they are not even trying or making effort to understand the tactics that is involved here. Because this is an issue of you dealing with a, um, beliefs, with a set of people that are as um, dangerous as the Taliban. And imagine the kind of um, tactics that was involved, counterterrorism, all, all sorts, that was involved against the Taliban. Um, you had um, foreign alliance and a whole lot of other things. But coming back to Fulani attacks, these are guys that are well networked and very strong country. So what next should the government be doing? We need more proactive um, approach from the state of not as Eurofire himself who has been so reactive on that particular issue. So we need to treat this issue as a matter of national security. And we need to engage all the tactics that are involved as much as possible. And we need to stop treating this issue in, um, in an aspect that isolates it, or in a way that isolates the issue to just some sort of little grievance or something. This has a broader concept, uh, con this, this has a broader, um, this is a broader issue that has its, um, Fault in history and at the same time to has its faults in the future so the fulani guys based on what they think they were in uh, in charge of in in hundreds or thousands of years ago i think they're trying to revive that which has a lot of implications for the future well moving forward i think um, we need more action and less pr on the side of the government because as it is we see pictures we see as i was saying well starched uniforms of um the army, the police, and all that. But then we're seeing less action. Um, see how long it took the president to address this issue and all that. It's, it's quite clear to the people that they can't trust this government. Say, uh, we can't trust this government, um, not just in terms of um, being proactive, but also in terms of motive, in terms of um, what they have shown us so far as to where they are coming from in terms of this crisis. Because we have time and again, um, government reducing it to little clashes. And some people going as far as trying to create excuses for what is happening. In fact, we've heard on one of the, um, the army leaders saying on ground that he's not there to take sides. And we, we have to ask what side is there to take, um, the side of death and life, or we, we really don't understand why they make these statements, but it does not increase any anything for us, it doesn't do anything for us in terms of confidence um, in, in the government of the day. As uh, Mukhtar had said, the government of the day has failed woefully to protect lives. Um, of course, it's not too late to protect those who are still alive and they need to change their modus operandi. We need to see more work and less PR. All right, guys, thanks for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts, but that's where we have to leave the conversation. We'll take a quick break and when we return, we'll see some of the comments that you're sending through our social media platforms. We'll take a look at some of them and then review the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel 
in the past week. Stay with us. The size of the 2017 capital budget of 2.24 trillion naira. President Mohamed Buhari presenting the 2017 budget to the National Assembly begins this week's most viewed videos. Up next in fourth is the refusal of a court to grant bail to the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu. We had a voice speaking that uh, I am Judah Jikaros, a Migogoni Mukbajeshun, all those stuff. The third and most viewed video is a 12 year old rescued after three days in a war in Ondo State. We're not like, this thing is getting too much. We now went to ask our neighbor, that, who did you put in your house that is disturbing us at night? And our neighbor told us that we should be the one that she has been thinking of coming to ask us. And we discovered that it was just the poor boy that was dead. Second spot is taken by the confirmation by the Nigerian army that he has taken over the headquarters of the dreaded sect Boko Haram. And in first is the meeting between the worldwide general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, and President Muhammad Buhari. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Well, those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel. However, now that the police has set up a mobile unit in Kafanchan, the Air Force launched an aerial patrol, the Army deploying two battalions to the area, and barking on cross-border patrol and are also recovering arms from the pastoralists, and to cap it all, a presidential order for a strong action to be taken against those behind the attacks. Residents of the area and indeed Nigerians will be hoping that the attacks come to an end soon. We draw the curtains on this note and also continue via the social media addresses showing on your screen. I'm Victor Mathias. Thank you for being part of the program.